All right, today I'm going to take you on a tour of Newark, Ohio. What's so special about Newark, Ohio? Well, Newark, Ohio has ruins from an ancient Native American civilization called the Hopewell Mound Builders, who lived from approximately the 500s BC to about 400 AD. Now, Hopewell is an American name from a guy named Mordecai Hopewell. If his name had been Mordecai Johnson, they probably would have been called the Johnson Mound Builders. Anyways, this is an ancient city hidden right in plain sight. It's about an hour's drive east of Columbus, Ohio. And if you see this building here, then you know you're heading in the right direction. <laughs> How'd you like to work there? Anyways, if you go to Newark, Ohio, you will be able to go and visit massive ancient earthworks. So first, Let's go back to a book called Ancient Monuments of the Mississippi Valley by Ephraim Squire and Edwin Davis. This was published in 1848, and I believe it was the Smithsonian's very first book published. Now, the Mississippi Valley doesn't just mean places along the Mississippi River. Pretty much, if you were going west of the Appalachian Mountains, you were in what was called the Mississippi Valley back in that time. So, this book has probably about 200 survey drawings of just some of the ancient earthworks of the Hopewell Mound Builder civilization. Some of these earthworks have been discovered to be a lot older, um, classified under the Adena Mound Builder civilization, which go back as far as the 2000s BC. But anyways, Newark, Ohio is one of the survey drawings in this book. So here's a survey drawing. This is what it would have looked like in the 1800s. All of those lines represent large embankments of earth, and all of those little dots that you see represent mounds of dirt. Wherever you see bold black lines, that represents a massive ditch. So let's get online and see what this area looks like almost 200 years later. And there you have it. There's Newark, Ohio today. A lot of what was once there is now gone, as you can see. But what is still there in the upper left is the giant circle and octagon that are connected together. That area is now a golf course, Mound Builders Country Club. You can go play there. You can go and visit. I was at this area in 2015. And if you're ever out that way, I recommend definitely going and checking this out. A little bit south of there, down there in the lower right of the picture, you can also see a great circle is preserved there as well. That's a park. You can just go and walk around. So that's the first place I'm going to take you to visit today. Here we are at the Great Circle. I am standing at the entrance. You'll notice a little building in the background. That's a little visitor center you can go and visit. And I am standing on top of the uh, north embankment at the entrance. And I'm going to do a very slow pan here so that you can see the entrance and as far into the circle as you can from where I'm standing. Now, like I said, I'm standing on the north embankment. You're looking at the ditch, and then the entrance, and then the south ditch, and the south embankment. And some people believe that uh, these geometrical earthwork structures were actually originally created by the Adena Mound Builders, and then later occupied by the Hopewell Mound Builders. But either way, the Hopewell definitely used these sites. And now you can see where the circle begins. And these ditches and embankments are massive. The embankments are the largest at the entrance, but they're still pretty large around the rest of the uh, circle. So we're starting to get into the circle here. And as some of you know, I'm a believer in the Book of Mormon, which is about a group of people who lived in ancient America from the 500s BC up to about 400 AD, right around the time of the Hopewell. They were a group of people who, many of whom, believed in Jesus Christ as the Son of God and the Savior of all mankind. Anyway, in the book, they speak of how they built forts that had massive ditches and massive embankments. Of course, the forts, the ditches were on the outside and the embankment was on the inside, and that is how Hopewell forts are built. But this uh, great circle, you'll notice the ditch is on the inside and the embankment is on the outside. And like I mentioned before, these geometric earthworks could be older than the Hopewell. They could go back to the 
Adena Mound Builders time period. And the Adena Mound Builders match up a lot with the Jaredite civilization mentioned in the Book of Mormon, who actually lived in ancient America from the 2000s BC up to about 600 BC around there, shortly before the Nephites, Lamanites, and Mulekites arrived. But anyway, the Book of Mormon also speaks of at times when they were in battle, they had so many prisoners and they had to keep them guarded and keep them in prisons. I have to wonder, you know, even though this site may have been originally created by the Adena or the Jaredites, I have to wonder if the Nephites would have used this as a place to hold prisoners. Because at the top of the embankments of their forts, they had a wooden palisade made of logs that would go all the way around the fort. So you've got the ditch and then the embankment and then the large palisaded fence at the top of the embankment. And that's exactly how the Hopewell built their forts as well. So when I see something like this, I have to wonder, could it have been possible that the Nephites might have used this at one point as a prison? I mean, it's a 30 acre area. At times they had tons of prisoners and I could see this as an area meant to keep people in instead of keeping people out. Anyways, I don't know for sure. That's just something that I'm throwing out there as a possibility. Anyways, I'm going to switch to a different angle here. Now I'm just inside the circle. And to give you an idea how big these ditches and embankments are, there's me. You can see me walking towards the ditch. And I start to go down. Down. I'm still going down in there. And I'm six feet tall. And now you can't even see me. I'm still walking along the bottom of the ditch. And so th these ditches are deeper than six feet. And this is after, you know, 2,000 years or more of slump. And there you see me coming up the embankment. And just look at how big that embankment is. Look at how small I am compared to it. Now, like I said, the embankments are biggest near the entrance, but they're still pretty big all the way around. Now here's a different angle of the same spot. I came back there on another day during the same trip in 2015. There I am starting to go down into the ditch. This is just to give you an idea how massive this place is. There I am standing at the bottom. Now I'm going to start hiking up the embankment. Look how small I am compared to the embankment. Look at the size of the trees behind me. They're massive. Anyways, this is just an amazing place to go and visit. Like I say, just about an hour's drive east of Columbus, Ohio, Newark, Ohio. And there I am at the top. All right, now I'm at the opposite end of the circle. I'm standing on the outer embankment, looking at the ditch. I'm gonna show you the circle from the backside. Anyway, there's a trail on top of the embankment. You can walk around this entire circle on the embankment. You can go down in the ditches. You can walk around the inside of the circle. There's a few mounds on the inside of the circle as well. Anyways, this uh, ditch and embankment may look a little smaller to you, and granted, it isn't as big as the entrance, but they're still pretty big, as I'm going to show you right now. Okay, I got my camera sitting here in the bottom of the ditch. Here I come, walking down the embankment. And 
and there I am at the bottom of the ditch. So you can see it's still pretty big. Now I'm hiking up to the top, going inside the circle. So yeah, the Great Circle, Newark, Ohio. It's an awesome place to visit if you're ever out that way. And of course, if you are, also stop off at the Mound Builders Country Club, which is where we're going next. So here's the Mound Builders Country Club. I am standing in the little neck that connects the Great Circle to the Great Octagon. I'm standing on top of the berm. There's the circle. Obviously, it's too big to catch all at once in my camera, but you can see just how massive it is. Now we're looking at the inside of the little neck that connects the circle to the octagon. And this place has a lot of interaction with the sun, the moon, the stars, solstices, equinoxes. Um, pretty much throughout the whole year, this place is interacting with what's going on in the sky. And I can't remember if it's Wayne May or Amberly Nelson, but there's uh, somebody at the Book of Mormon Evidence conferences who talks a lot about this particular site. And the day's overcast. I wish it had been more uh, sunny because the time of day I was there would have given me some nice shadows. But, oh well, you take what you can get. Anyways, now we're looking at the beginning of the octagon here. You can see it stretch all the way back there. You can see where the break is at the first corner. And you can see the embankment starting to go the other way to form the octagon. And at each opening, at each corner, there is a little mound like you see right there at each corner of the octagon. And so now we're looking inside the octagon. And now we are getting to the south part of the octagon. You can see where the embankment turns right there. Now obviously these embankments aren't as large as the ones down at the Great Circle a little bit south of here, but they're still pretty big. And of course they would have been bigger 2,000 years ago. I wanted to do some more filming around this place, but like I say, there were people there playing golf, and if you're just walking around getting in the way of people's games, you might get kicked out. So I didn't want to cause any problems. And you can see that building back there. And just behind the building, you can see where the next embankment starts to go along the south edge of the octagon. Another cool thing that happened while I was visiting this place is, first, as I was leaving the Great Circle and about to head up to the Mound Builders Country Club, I saw a tour bus pull up. I saw a bunch of people walking out of it. And then after I'd been up at the golf course for a few minutes, the same tour bus shows up and people start walking out of the bus and I notice Hey, this is a tour group with uh, Bruce Porter. Some of you guys know him. Some of you may have seen his uh, videos or seen him uh, at presentations. He shares a lot of cool stuff. So I recommend checking his stuff out whenever you get a chance. Anyway, so it was really cool to see all those guys. And I chatted with them for a little bit. Here's a list of some other people I've learned from. And some of these people have websites. Some of them don't, at least not that I know of. But um, yeah, I recommend checking out these people's stuff if you can. Uh, a lot of people with a lot of uh, interesting information about Hopewell Mound Builders, the Adena Mound Builders, and um, just a lot of you know ancient American history in general that uh, connects with Book of Mormon people. As you can see, Bruce Porter's on there. Um, some other guys who've got some really good videos uh, of the Great Circle and the Mound Builders Country Club um, will be Ryan Fisher, Wayne May, Rod Meldrum, um, they've got DVDs. I recommend checking out their stuff as well. But uh, really, all these guys have um, a lot of awesome information. And I'm probably missing some people, but uh, these are all I can think of at the moment. So yeah, that was my trip to Newark, Ohio back in 2015. Hope you enjoyed the little bit here that I could share with you. But even pictures and video does not do these places justice. So if you're ever out that way, make the time to go check it out. And like I said, and as some of you may know, I'm a believer in the Book of Mormon, about a group of people in ancient America who believed in Jesus Christ. 
and I believe that the ancient Adena and Hopewell Mound Builder ruins are from the people in the Book of Mormon. Because again, Adena and Hopewell are American names. We don't know what these civilizations called themselves. So check it out if you want, read about them. But the most important thing about this book is that it helps people just get closer to Jesus Christ. And when we trust and follow him, it brings happiness and peace into our lives. At least for me it does, and for other people I've observed. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this travelogue video, and um, stay tuned for the next one.